So Blackmagic sent over their micro panel, and this is obviously by Blackmagic, obviously. <laughs> but anyway, when you look at this, I see a lovely, lovely bit of professional kit. Now first, just getting out of the box, it works with Type-C, it has rotary knobs, 12 of them. It has a, a peripheral load of buttons on there. It's got three discs and three balls, and it's definitely robustness. So as Blackmagic say, it's portable. It's more portable than their uh, next range is up, obviously, but this weighs about five kilos, and, and there's no doubt. But I like it weighs that much, because it, if you're going to be colour grading, you want it to make sure it's precise, that nothing's moving. You want, to, you want it to be professional, and you want it to be perfect. Yeah, so that's, that's the whole point of having this. The good thing about it as well, it's got nice rubber feet at the bottom, and it's got a nice metal plate. And that, the actual metal plate looks aluminium, actually. I suppose the top does, but everything just feels heavy. The balls inside the actual casing of it alone feels like weighted like balls. Everything just feels weighted down. I just love it. I think it's really cool. And it's got a little DaVinci Resolve logo on the side there, and it's got nothing on the other side. But you got to think this panel is pretty big, and you're going to need to use a keyboard with it. There's no doubt you're going to need a keyboard with it, because the next one up obviously is a lot more money. And then the top tier one is £25,000, and you don't need a keyboard for that one, but you need a keyboard for this one. So in the video, what we're going to do, we're going to have a little square at the bottom, and then I'm going to be touching one of these wheels, and then to make it easier, um, instead of like looking on the screen with a game capture, it's going to be like on the screen watching me do something on the wheel, then on the other screen you're going to see me changing colours and seeing how things activate while activating, touching a rotary wheel or a button or a disc or um, a rotary ball. Whatever you want, I'm going to do it for you. It's going to be so simple and so educational, it's definitely worth a watch. The next day. So today is a very special day, and the reason why it's special is because we've got a black magic micro panel right here, and uh, we're about to start to do the testing to see how good it really does perform, and whether you should buy it or not, and where if there's competition, and where there's not competition. And also, is it easy to use, is it easy to travel with, we're going to cover ugh, just loads of stuff about it. So first off, we've got a lovely panel, and as you know, it's pretty robust, you've got these spinning discs, and these uh, rotary weighted balls inside and they just feel smooth as anything so at the moment i have got it on to gain so on here is gain so the whole point about it is working out whether this micro panel works really well with the software that we've got in front of us let me give you a quick note that it does not work with adobe premiere pro or anything like that uh, after effects anything like that it's got its own software which you download which is the davinci resolve this one says 12.5, it should be DaVinci Resolve 14, but I guess you've got to pay for that one, but this one's free. Uh, it's really quite nice, I've played around with it uh, a little bit already. If we have a look over here now, so we've got Gain, and you can see that I'm changing colour here. Actually, I should make this a little bit bigger, so so we've got it slightly bit bigger. Oh yeah, and the reason why I've got two screens as well, I've got a game capture so you can see what information's been detailed actually on your screen right now and then on my screen here the game capture can't pick up two screens at the same time but with DaVinci Resolve and the micro panel you can have as many screens as you want and for a colorist you would normally have like a small one there one for your editing station that goes with this then um, another one for editing color and then another one for the, like the final result to see what it's like I've got a type-c cable connected in via USB 3 into this video um, video station so we've connected it to this and it's working pretty well plugged it in plugged and play came up with actually saying it's a micro panel and it's recognized it and then you just download the software and it's simple straight working so as you can see that I'm actually playing around with the, the disc here and I can just spin it and as you can see it still keeps going it's got lovely um, ball bearings inside the actual system really well built but we're on the gain here, this is where it's come up and I'm playing around with the disc as you can see, just like that. It moves up one decibel in each increment and it does that for the whole of the actual software itself so you can get it very precise and very accurate. So I like what I've got in front of me, it's like really quite decent, I've got all my um, functions ready to go but it's a bit weird that you've got three discs three balls but you've only you got like four on the um, on the screen but it still doesn't make any difference whatsoever because the difference is is that I can still go to the offset by pressing offset and then I've got control of the offset control here on the micro panel and it's awesome 
I can really play around with it. So now I'm going to just go to undo and then go back to uh, turning offset off, which is a little bit more brighter. As you should notice if you've read about it and you want to buy this, it's got um, LEDs underneath. So normally when you're a video editor or a color, no, not video editor, a colorist, you normally do things normally when it's a little bit more of a darker condition. So these are lit up and everything like that. But technically after a while you played around with this for, I don't know, whenever you get used to it, then you obviously you can, won't need to look at it. You can kind of feel around and know where you go with it. It's like um, the discs are not all in a straight line. They're like kind of ones in the middle at the bottom and then two at the top. Then you've got three buttons and then you've got three buttons at the top of that. Then you've got these rotary knobs here as well, 12 of them. And you just click down and that kind of redoes. Or you've got the redo button here. Actually, should we talk about like the buttons really quickly? So on the left hand side you got I've got to stop doing that because anyway this is the lift button here. So you've got RGB all and level, and then you've got RGB all level in the middle one, and you've got RGB all and level on this one. But what this all stands for is that I can press the buttons and activate and get stuff going on here. And on the software, which really does do my head in a little bit, you've got number one here, which is a row of stuff here, and then you've got number two. And then it gives you like uh, color boost, shading, um, tint, temp, and stuff like that. And basically, what I was thinking is, why don't they not have like the whole thing going across the actual screen? There's no way for me to have a look at the software. I was playing around with it to have a look at that. But yeah, you also got like your normal video editing tools here. So you got your back and you got your forward. When you're playing it through on the actual colorist level, you can just play it. And then you can hide my voice like that, and then I can play backwards. Then I can just stop it. Then I can go so go forward, and it goes by increments each uh, frame. Let's talk about node. Now, when you want to do masking and you want to affect color and color in a way where you got say a background, say you're f uh, filming outside and you want the background to be purple but it's actually green, and then you want the person that's wearing a t-shirt that's white to be blue, you can do all that with nodes by mixing up the different nodes. But there's no node button. All there is is previous known node and then first node. So that means that you need to physically have a mouse and keyboard to actually connect the nodes into the screen as like a masking tool. So technically you don't really need one of these, you could actually just have a mouse and a keyboard and create everything. But this is so much faster because you have got discs and you've got balls and you can literally just move and grade your, uh, your clips very quickly. Or if you want to do adjustment layer of the whole thing, you can grade something really quickly and make it look nice. You also, if you're not all about the, the wheels and stuff like that, you can use curves, and you, but you still need to use your mouse to move it up and down. If you are just getting into it, it's good, it's cool, it's really good, it's still professional. But if you're a professional professional, you're going to be wanting more because not everything's here. You haven't got no screens here. Obviously, Blackmagic do sell the next version up, which is... Uh, about £2,000 and it's got all the screens there and you can have more functions and you've got the no button there. But you have not got the no button in this one. And this one is £775 that has been seen on their website. Which is not a bad price but it's still very expensive. There's other competitors out there which is Tangent. And uh, Tangent is a company that deal with colour um, correction and grading and stuff like that as a tool. So this is a tool and they've got a tool, but they've got a wide range of tools that work with Adobe Premiere, which is industry leading standard. Whereas Blackmagic is industry standard, but in a special way. So let's just play around with uh, the rotary, um, the weighted balls uh, for the game. Uh, so I've got that at the moment. And as you can see, you can see that I'm changing colour. And I'm, it's so precise and accurate. That's what I like about it. It's not just because it's black magic and they know what they're doing as well. It's the fact that you've got something, you've got a working tool if we're just starting off. And I can get my perfect grade right now. So from me, that looks like a nice little grade there. I'm popping right now. Let's muck about with the gamma. So if I'm gonna actually, let me just um, click on, I'm gonna rotate the disc quickly. And then I'm going to move it over to the, well, <laughs> that looked quite funny. Let's reset that. So that resets the whole thing. So all the little grades that I did, so I'll go down with the gain, I'll go up with the gamma, 
and then I'll move to the left with the lift and I'll press reset and I'm back to normal. Now if I do like one step here to the gamma, one step to the gain, one step to the lift and I'll press undo, now I'm going from gain to uh, lift, I'm going back in all different steps. So now I'm back to where I was. But as I said before, if I go all like that and I press reset, bang, it resets the whole thing. You also got loop as well, you got play still, you got grab still, so you can grab a still if you want and edit a photo or a thumbnail, whatever. And then you got loop, we can loop the music, not loop the music, loop the video, and then you can still play the video. This is all good. I like how they've done this. This is awesome. Um, you've got all these uh, controls here as well, so you've got contrast, so I can mess around with my contrast, and this goes in little increments as well. Um, it's very, you can literally just fine tune it with your fingers, but the more that you do it, it's still, it goes more than one, it starts to go into threes, the sevens, the tens, the faster you start spinning the rotary uh, knobs around, but then if you slow it right down, you can go just in one decibel at a time, which is awesome. And that's for everything. As I was saying before, I don't really like this control panel. I would rather it have like the whole thing so you can see what you're doing. Um, if you're gonna mess around with the curves, then you have to obviously use a mouse so I can move around the mouse to get my curves. It feels pretty accurate and really nice. Then you just jump into edit and you can see what you're doing straight away. And um, I can play the video back like so. So I can just play it from here. And then I can just press stop, and then I can go backwards, I can press stop, and I can press loop, and then loop it up. Um, then I can, obviously if I've got, if I go back into colour, this is what I like about it so much. You can jump in from the editing station straight into the colour station, back from the colour station into the editing station. It would be so awesome if it worked with Premiere Pro, but it doesn't. So, I don't know if they're going to change that in an update or anything like that, but it would be awesome that everyone could have their own options of like dealing whatever they want to do. It only works with Blackmagic, but Blackmagic have got their own software and it is free, but then you can spend a bit of money and get the other version. But the version that I've got is free. It only took 10 minutes to download off a 100 megabit download speed internet connection, and it was downloaded and it was it's working straight away. It's awesome. It's very easy. If you're just getting into it and you are semi-professional but is it really worth it should you not just go up to the next level well I think from my point of view you should go up to the next level but if you haven't got if you don't want to break the bank and you think that you wanted to start off with this it's definitely worth it walking around with it is it really worth walking around yeah it is but then it's not because it is still heavy but if it's not heavy, it means that when you're doing things really precise, it's going to start to move. And if it moves, that means you're not going to get a very good adjustment on your grade. So everything to be professional was being robust and very like weighty. And it means that everything's there with its nice, good bit of quality control. Now, um, I like everything about it. I like the little illuminated lights and stuff like that. I like the design. But as you can see, I've got a massive still series keyboard and mouse, and it takes up lots of space. So if I wanted to go back into editing, I'm actually having problems, even in vice versa. If I move this and move that, and then put a the keyboard in front, it's gonna be longer to stretch my arms to get to uh, the colored wheels. But as I was speaking to um, someone earlier, I was saying if you get the keyboard and you kind of like move it up like a slant with um, obviously the, um, micro panel as well you can make it nice and easy and you can kind of like glimpse down look at your screen look and then kind of look what you're doing at the same time but it's pretty awesome it is awesome and the micro panel feels like it's at a lost cause with this software because this software feels like it's for the more expensive versions but it's still just like a watered down version that you can use but you have to click 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 and if you've got click 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 you need a mouse 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 to click 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 and then you need a keyboard to go and navigate through certain things as well so you actually need all three of these to make this more of a professional work gear. It has got its positives and it has got its negatives. So if you thought this video was helpful and you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If not, dislike it, leave a comment, subscribe, share, and follow me on Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram for some behind the scenes or some pictures or something. Just come and just take a look. But anyway, other than that, I think this is definitely a good buyer. But it also depends if you're amateur or semi-professional. Because if you're a proper, proper professional, then you're going to find that this has got limitations. But it's still good at the end of the day. And also, if you've got a small desk, you're going to find limitations with that. 
And if you like something that's accurate, then this is for you. And if you want something that's heavy, and you know it's really gonna last for quite a long time, and it's got your little uh, media center on the side, then this is for you. Um, there's, like, there's loads of things that come into it that show that it's for you and it's not for you. You just gotta make that option yourself. Are you a true colorist? Are you, are, are you, are you thinking, I don't need this, I could just use a keyboard and mouse? Because if you're that, then you're kind of like, you, you just need to test this out yourself, and once you feel it, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But what I dislike about this product is that the buttons, when you press the button, you have to press it really hard. Because when you press it like that, it doesn't do anything. It looks like you've pressed the button, but you haven't. Now, if I'm moving around and everything like that, I could accidentally press the button, and it's a little bit soft. The buttons need to be adjusted and need to be tighter. The rotary buttons are really awesome, really solid. The discs are really solid, and the weighted balls in there are really good. Um, Everything works, and it's plug and play as well, so that works really well, and you just got done on software. But anyway, hope this is enough information for you. If you want to ask me any questions about this product itself, just leave it in the comments down below, and um, subscribe for more up-to-date video production and software tutorials or reviews. Thanks for watching.